the night on Film Junkie Live. After the release of the new Bad Boys trailer from the directors of the Batgirl film, fans are going, hey, couldn't have been that bad. Rebel Moon, baby. We've got some updates when it comes to screenings and Q&A and some Funko Pops and all kinds of goodies. Godzilla Kong, the new empire. We don't have reviews yet, which should tell you something, but we have reactions and we have projections. Florence, pew, 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 pew. Give us a little tour of the Thunderbolts set as we see the logo and the little change to the title. All that and so much more tonight on Film Junkie Live. That's right, guys, wearing, uh, Wearing my uh, Giants shirt because opening day is tomorrow, which is great. Cannot wait. Baseball season's back. Okay? But I know you guys would rather, you Dodger fans would rather bet on the Dodgers. Am I right? Well, if you know, you know. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. <laughs> Well, hello, children. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Film Junkie Live. It is Wednesday. Let's get the humping. It's Wednesday. That's right. It's Wine Wednesday. So, hey, pour yourself a, a glass if you want to partake in Wine Wednesday. Cheers. Ah, there we go. There we go. Hopefully, you guys are doing great. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that like, thumbs up. Comment share do all the things and of course follow me on all the various sock meds you want to support the channel we got the patreon we got the membership program as well if you want to get a little uh you know get a little bit more intimate after the uh, after this stream and do a members only stream right after this pick my brain a little bit so hopefully you guys are doing good are gonna be talking about yeah some bat girl why not uh and then of course rebel moon and godzilla kong and of course we got thunderbolts we got some thunderbolts action happening and everything so all right guys let's see who is out there all right so we got mr shane baker right here Watch Predators, I agree. Really underrated. The opening with the free fall. Yeah, I know. That's right. Yeah, I'll post a clip with my little spiel about that. If you guys missed it on Monday's Film Junkie Live, you know, and over the weekend I watched Predators and I just was like, you know, I, I, it's not like it, it got shit on, but, it, you know, there's just there just needs to be more love for Predators, I feel. What's going on, Mr. Uh, Gilmore Eric Smith? Well, from their point of view, everything about post-Aquaman was just made less and less. While the four uh, last year weren't awful, they were certainly forgettable personally, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. You know, we'll talk about some theories and whatever. Hey, we got Miss Lisa Jackson here. Always great to see ya, my dear. Let's see. Got a lot of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I know you do. I know you do for sure. <laughs> Fatty God, what's happening? Just watch Smile. It's definitely one of the most unnerving. Yeah, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good, creepy, small. The way, way it ends, though, is kind of weird, but, you know, it's whatever. And they're supposed to be like, uh, supposed to be a sequel that they're making right now, too, right? Which is interesting. I'm like, why, well, you know, how are they going to continue it, you know, with the way that the first one ended? We got Eric Patterson. What's happening? We got James Noel. Good to see you. Hey, there's Mr. William Powell right here. Um, yes, I know you knew you knew the joke I was saying because that was for the Dodger fans. If you guys aren't updated with things that are going on, you know, they spent all this money on this, you know, certain baseball player. And then turns out that he might be involved in some gambling shit. <laughs> I mean... Probably nothing's going to happen because, you know, who knows. But, yeah, it was just kind of funny. But baseball season's back, baby. Here we got Mr. Jason McKenzie helping out that pirate ship. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers. Much appreciated. Ah, always appreciate that. Thank you for the uh, the super chat right there. Always helps, always helps, always helps. Love you, pal. We got Max Wolf Night Danger. Hey, Dave, what up? I'm doing good. I just saw the new Bad Boys trailer, and I don't even know what is going on with Batgirl movie. I'm well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it, Max. Uh, it's not, Nothing's really going on. I mean, it's just people, have, after seeing that trailer, because the same directors, so now they're like, you know, the call for releasing Batgirl has just come about again. That's about it. Stephanie T., always great to see you. All right, who else we got? I think that's pretty much it. Lisa, come by the... Ooh, there you go. That's right, you both live in Vegas. 
Otani is on the cover of yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Ota- I mean, nothing. I mean, it, it's just it's just funny. I mean, what's funny about all that? Uh, well, let's see how ironic the most yeah sponsored the same betting companies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of craziness right there. No, not releasing a movie for fake Trinity of. Oh, no. It's not what I'm saying here, Mr. Super Omnicron. Omnicron. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. But it's okay. Get your opinions in. It's fine. Uh, no, I mean, when it comes to the whole Otani thing, it was funny because I was talking to my dad. I was talking to my dad. Uh, I had breakfast with my dad on Sunday, and he's a Dodgers fan, of course. And, of course, he was just like, good God, really? I mean, first off, he didn't actually like the fact. I mean, he's glad that Otani is on the Dodgers, obviously, because, you know, he's like this phenomenal player, even though he can't pitch for another year he could bat but he could can't pitch but uh you know he wasn't he, he didn't think that they should have paid all that money for him but then of course you know <laughs> it's good all i all i all i all, all i have to say as being a giants fan no eyes are on the giants this year okay the giants are gonna just see what happens they're rebuilding yet again Dodgers, all eyes are on the Dodgers. If the basically people are just going, if the Dodgers don't win the World Series, with all the money they've spent on players and stuff like that, it's it's not going to look good. That's all I got to say. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that, but they should. But I mean, after what happened last year, and then all the you know money they spent this year, yeah, they should be winning the whole thing this year. So all eyes on the Dodgers. Nobody's looking at the Giants. <laughs> So I'm happy with that because I'm like, yeah, you don't need to look at the Giants, new manager, rookies. There's all kinds of rebuilding that's happening. But let's see if the Giants actually, you know, let's see if they I'm, what I'm what I'm curious to see is if the Giants can, you know, stick with it, be at least in the hunt for a little bit. You know, let's see if they remain wild card, second place. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Dodgers all the way, no choking, and yes, SF Giants are a, mo- are a monster in waiting. Yeah. I mean, I think the Giants are building, they're just rebuilding big time. I mean, the last OG of the Dynasty era is now gone. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. New manager, I don't know. It's all just pretty crazy. All just pretty crazy. But, yeah, I mean, my dad was like, you got to be freaking kidding me after this whole. And then, of course, Atani did his press conference but he was just reading off something i don't know it's all just kind of crazy it's all just all just uh no not buster posey it was uh it was crawford crawford brandon crawford was the last one to leave and he didn't even retire he went to the freaking cardinals it kind of that pissed me off but we'll see what happens we'll see what happens like i said it's just uh it's gonna be an interesting year it's gonna be a very very interesting year all right, guys, let's get to these tweets right here. Where are we going to start? Okay, we're not going to start there. All right, we're going to start right here. We're going to start off with some awesome Henry Cavill news. Henry Cavill, obviously, he's got his new movie coming out, which is called Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I always have to look at it because I'm like, what's that title called again? But, uh,. Obviously, that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Very much looking forward to it. It's Guy Ritchie. Looks like just a great, fantastic movie. Looks like the entire cast was having fun. But Henry Cavill, apparently on set, acted like Superman. Henry Cavill saved Alex Pettifer from falling off a boat on the set of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. He saved me from falling off a boat. I nearly drowned. So I could officially say I've been saved by Henry. Anybody else jealous? I'm jealous. I'm a little jealous of that. Who would be saved by Superman? I think any one of us would be would love to be saved by Superman. Can you imagine that? Pretty crazy. I wonder. I wonder what the details happened when it came to that. But that just shows you how awesome Henry Cavill is right there, and he's just got that Superman brain, and he went for it, saved him. Absolutely saved him. So that's pretty cool. I just thought that when I when I saw that, I saw that quote, I was like, okay, good for Henry. Henry, you awesome dude. You awesome chap. Gotta love that. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this movie. I mean, 
I'm gonna go see Godzilla Kong tomorrow. Not really looking forward to it, but I'm gonna go see it. <laughs> it's it's whatever. It'll be just VFX porn, you know, basically. And it's just another chapter in the monster verse, even though it's like, you know, coming off of minus ones. But yeah, I'm, I'm like trying to think. I'm like, okay, we got Rebel Moon and this movie that are coming out pretty much in the same. And I'm like, that's that's just oh yeah, I can't wait for all that. So good stuff right there. Oh, did you guys see this? So obviously we know that uh, Timothy Chalamet. By the way, I watched Wonka over the weekend. Not bad. You know, it was fine. It was fine. I didn't. I, it was better than I thought it would be. That's the way I'll put it right there. I watched Wonka finally. You can watch it on Max. Didn't catch it in theaters, obviously, but uh, you know, it did well in the theaters. But uh, you know, it wasn't a terrible movie. You know, it just wasn't fully up my alley i guess you could say but timothy chalamet is just becoming the new golden boy he's he's becoming the new golden boy because he just signed a first look deal with warner brothers which good on warner brothers because hey guess what they had tom cruise margot robbie timothy chalamet the golden child and uh, they got the the veteran and they got the golden girl so why not that's pretty cool but right now what timothy chalamet is doing is of course playing bob dylan in james mangold's biopic and james mangold posted an official image Image of him as Bob Dylan and it looks pretty damn good there it is awesome image right there obviously you know he's standing far but I mean it's all about this the shot just looks good I mean look at that set I mean obviously outside and they redid it and they got the old cars but that's looking good right there I think that looks pretty freaking sweet it's a beautiful picture and he's got the hair he's got everything so Chalamet is just, he's becoming that guy. I mean, I'm warming up to him. I've never been like, I was just like, oh, yeah. I was just like, what's the big deal with this, with this kid? I liked him in the first Dune, but then, of course, when it came to the second Dune, I liked him even more. So I'm like, now becoming, what, what, now I'm becoming a Chalamet fan? I don't know. And stop, and please, can we stop fan casting him as Nightwing or Robin? Can we stop doing that? Please. He can't be Nightwing. Guy has no ass. If you're going to play Nightwing, you got to have an ass. I'm just saying. Got no ass. Not playing Nightwing. It's one of the... You know how I, how I always joked around? It was just like anytime they cast Batman, they just get the, uh, the headshots and they cover up this and just look at the chins. Comes to casting Nightwing, they got to just look at, you know, how's he looking in those tights when it comes to that ass. Okay. Just saying. I mean... <laughs> There's always those jokes, right? There's always those jokes. But everybody, they always, everybody keeps on... But then what's funny is, too, is, is he talked to Leonardo DiCaprio, and Leonardo DiCaprio said, don't ever do a, you know, a superhero flick. But then, he, then recently he said he'd be open to it. I don't know. I think he's got enough on his plate. This could possibly be an Academy Award nomination because it's a biopic. So I don't think he needs to get into that genre. I think he should probably just stay out of that genre. You don't need it. You don't need it. Especially the way it is right now. You don't really need it. Unless there's something that's really cool that just comes around, which that could be the case too. I mean, but I don't think he needs it. I don't think he needs it right now. But, you know, Wonka and Dune, you're already in two franchises. Is there any more franchises he's a part of? Or is that pretty much it? I don't know. Is there anything more? I don't know. No? I think that's it. But yeah, I don't think he needs it. Keep him out of there. Keep him out of there. But yeah, I always see the fan cast, and I'm like, eh, stop it. Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson? Dude doesn't age. We just saw him in Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. And I don't know about you guys, but, it, you know, when you look at the other two OG Ghostbusters, you're like, well, yeah, you know, they're definitely aged. But, man, talk about the definition of black don't crack. Can you believe this? Dude looks better at 79 years old. <laughs> like, what is going on here? I saw this. and I'm like, holy crap. The dude, like his, <laughs> it's just unbelievable right there. And yes, with the caption, he should be studied. <laughs> it's like, geez, dude's looking jacked wearing that freaking black t-shirt right there. I was like, oh, so I was like, man, he's that, he's that old. 
No way. I thought he was like in his late 60s, if anything. But dude looks like he's more in his late 50s, man. I tell you what. Just saying. That's a good looking that's a good looking man right there. It's a good looking man. And then speaking of Dune, Steven Spielberg recognizing, you know, game. What's the saying? Game recognizing game. Oh, he's recognizing game. I mean, not only did Denai also get, you know, the Christopher Nolan praise when it came to Dune Part 2, saying it's like the Empire Strikes Back of, like, sci-fi. Well, now we got Steven Spielberg chiming in on Dune Part 2 as well. Steven Spielberg tells Denai Villeneuve... <laughs> I know I say it wrong all the time, guys. Uh, that Dune 2 is one of the most brilliant science fiction films I've ever seen. That just shows you right there that when it comes to Dune Part 2, Dune Part 2, I mean, I tell you what, as much as uh, I love the first one, I mean, I, Dune Part 2, yeah, it just, it just, it exceeded that. I mean, it, it totally did. It totally did. And that's... That's why I, I rushed out to when, when my family wanted to see it. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. You're going to go see it. What time? When? I want to go see it again. And uh, he's not wrong. So, I mean, he's just getting the praise like a mother effer. And the fact that Timothy Chalamet did sign with Warner Brothers for like first, you know, to be like their golden boy. I mean, I think we could definitely bet that Dune Messiah is going to happen. Not going to happen soon. That's what sucks. It's probably not going to happen. We're probably not going to see that movie for another four or five years, if anything. And we'll see when it comes to all that. But it just seems like, yeah, all the pieces are falling in place when it comes to Dune Messiah. Because, hey, we want to see Paul's conclusion of his story, at least. And then, of course, expand off of that because there's children of Dune and, you know, there's the sisterhood and all that stuff that's supposed to be in the works as well. So, yeah. So there's all that. Let's see, what else we got? Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Quentin Tarantino. Happy birthday to you, one of my favorite directors of all time. Rico Jr. right here, who makes awesome posters. I've retweeted this before, but look at that poster right there. I want this on my fucking wall. I should probably, I think he, I think he sells these, but I need, I need this poster on my uh, wall right here. Quentin Tarantino's silhouette and all his movies right there. Look at that. That's just freaking beautiful right there. Absolutely beautiful. But yeah, happy birthday to Quentin Tarantino. I'm not sure how old he is. Sucks that there's only one more movie that he's going to be doing, at least right now. Uh, okay, and then, you know, I guess it's just going to be just a lot of Henry Cavill that's going to be happening in this episode of Film Junkie Live because, you know, prepare yourselves, ladies. I guess I don't know uh, how many are out there who are like Henry Cavill, but my God, this was released right here. And yep, this is for The Witcher. Just practicing. It's slow, right? Of course, at first, it's not fast. But remember, he's actually going to be doing. He's actually going to be doing. He's actually going to be doing like uh, you know Highlander reboot. So. The fact that he already has his training, you know, at least with a sword, you know, just thought it was pretty cool. Is that guy wearing a Panthers zip-up hoodie? He deserved to die. Just kidding. Pretty badass. He's not going to need much training. Not going to need much training when it comes to Highlander. And all that sword stuff. Oh, you guys want to see something kind of... Okay. Well, I mean, obviously with Ghost <laughs> with Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire that just came out. Uh, and saw it with Mama Film Junkie. I don't think she's out in... I don't think she's uh, in the chat right now. But uh, she, sent me, uh, she sent me some pictures, some old pictures, and I posted one of them. And it's, you know... Because obviously you guys know I've been a Ghostbusters fan for so long, ever as far back as I can remember. And uh, yeah, one Christmas morning, of course, my parents did get me the firehouse. And there's the picture right there. Look at that. That's when I got the firehouse. Got everything. Look at that. And yes, I know. I get it, guys. 
there's a Dodgers hat on top of the Ghostbusters firehouse. Yes, that was when my dad was trying to make me a Dodgers fan. And, you know, for the most part, it did kind of work. I, I guess as a kid, I did, when I watched baseball, I watched Dodgers. But then I broke away. Me and my brother, my brother and I broke away. And we got our own teams that we loved. But, yes, there is a Dodgers hat on there. Uh, you know, that's his hat. That's my, that's my dad's hat on there, of course, which is funny. But, yes, look at that. That's just me. Obviously, you still got the bow on there. You know, it's funny, too, is, like, you have, like, I remember this, uh, the real Ghostbusters little handheld game right here. I also, I think I also got that for uh, Christmas, too. But, yeah, look at that. Look at that right there. Little old me playing with uh, the firehouse right here. How adorable is that, right? Jeez, what happened? What happened? What happened? I remember that house. That's when I lived in Washington. We lived in a, you know, because I'm, I'm an Army brat. My dad was in the Army, so we lived in Fort Lewis, Washington. Fort Lewis, Washington, and I remember that house. I remember I was, like, looking at that picture. I was like, oh, yeah, we had that little nook right there. Then you go around the corner, the front door, the stairs. There was a bathroom right there, and, yeah, I was just remembering all that. So, yeah, she sent me, uh, she sent me that right there, and that was pretty cool. If you guys know what impression I'm doing, you know who I'm talking about. But, uh, yes, talking about, uh, of course, uh, Miss Grace. Miss uh, Grace. Do I have it? Do I have it ready? Oh, hold on. Where is it at? I had to reorganize this thing. Ah, uh, nope, don't have it. Don't have it ready. Where is it at? I thought I had it in my stream deck. I'm going to have to fix that, huh? No, it wasn't in there. Not in there? All right. Well, I wish I had it ready to go, but I didn't. I thought I had it in my... Nah. See, so, yeah. so I got to re I got to, like, update, like, my whole little, like, drops thing. I really got to do that. Anyways. Grace talked about, of course, uh, Joker 2 and talking about those test screenings, which we already heard Last week, I remember uh, talking about it where they said, like, oh, yeah, like, this movie is basically just uh, brilliant and the song choices and all that stuff. Apparently, it's going to have more songs than I thought originally because I was just thinking, like, okay, yeah, first act, second act, third act, they're just going to have a sing-along kind of thing. But apparently, there was, like, more songs that are going to be involved with it. But um, this is what she had to say. This is what she had to say when it came to when it came to Joker and hearing what she heard, which is, like, what? I hear the movie looks phenomenal. I hear it looks really, really good. I hear it looks really, really good. The people behind the movie feel confident the trailer is going to deliver. They feel really good about it. Okay? You hear it looks phenomenal. You hear it looks really, really good. I think phenomenal, you could have just stopped it there. But it's fine. Okay. Looks... Okay, looks like, so, so the cinematography just looks good? What are you trying to say here, Grace? <laughs> the people behind the movie feel confident the trailer is going to deliver? Yeah, of course they do. Why would they not? <laughs> it's, it's like, I don't know, I just found that funny. And there's actually a video. I mean, you can actually hear what she, do we have to actually hear what she has to say? No, we don't. We don't have to. We don't have to. <laughs> We're not, I, we don't need to hear her voice because, <laughs> you know. But it's just kind of funny. It was like, okay, it looks phenomenal, looks really, really good. And I'm like, just, okay, why are you saying looks? Or say, I mean, it's just like, it, to me, I'm like, okay, looks, it was like a weird thing, but okay, fine. But then it's like, yeah, of course. Obviously, the trailer that's going to be coming out, I mean, of course they're going to be confident about it. Can you imagine if they're like, oh, they're not that confident about it? Gee, they're worried. They're like, ah, we try to make a trailer, but we don't know if it's going to look good. Good God. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where I was like, this was going around? This is going around, really? Do we really need, like, this? I mean, this, there's no kind of insight on here. I like how Pop Crave right here said, Film Insider Grace Randolph. She's, no, she just comments. She's a comment. She, she does commentary, similar to a lot of us do commentary on kind of stuff. And, yeah, she has sources. But at the same time, at the same time it's like, Okay, what what sources? Are they? Anybody, anybody. I could have said something like this. I'm hearing this. I'm hearing that. Uh, you know, it looks good. 
I hear it looks good. People behind the movie, guess what? Confident. They're confident that it's going to be, you know, especially the trailer. Good. It's going to be good. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just found that funny. I just found that funny. I was like, why, why is that being spread around? It's like, okay, big deal. <sighs> oh boy. But, uh, Katie O'Brien, Katie O'Brien has actually uh, been cast. Well, she was already cast, but they just announced it on de- uh, deadline, just announced it, but because they're already filming mission impossible eight and they've got all the casting done, but Katie O'Brien, who of course was re- originally, uh, was recently, in that uh, Love, Lies, Blood, whatever the, that movie was called. Um, that looked pretty good. I, I do plan on checking it out when it's on streaming. Uh, she been, she's she been cast. And I'm kind of wondering, would she play a bad guy? Bad girl? Or is she going to be playing a protagonist? Is she going to be part of Ethan's team? That's what's going to be interesting. She got some muscle, man. She definitely got some muscle. And then we got James Gunn right here posting this. When it comes to, uh, he was just gifted a signed reprint of the iconic Action Comics number one by Jerry Siegel's grandsons. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. Showing some appreciation right there. A gift from Jerry Siegel's grandsons. And a reprint of the first issue of Action Comics signed by Jerry. It's been great having Mike and Jim around, keeping Jerry's spirit alive in the birth of the DCU. We here, we, here we are, here we all were on the day of the cast read read through. So that's pretty cool. And they apparently have read the script as well. They got to look at the script, so they are very much a part of it. And you know, that's that's pretty sweet. Keep all that alive. Keep some good vibes, some good energy, and everything like that. It, it needs it. Superman, l- 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 not legacy, uh, needs it. Definitely needs it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, and we, uh, on Monday, oof. On Monday, we did talk about Quiet on the Set. A docu-series that's on Max that talks about the stuff that happened with Nickelodeon and everything. Hey, new subscriber, Felipe. Good to see you. So, um, yeah, on Monday we talked about Quiet on the Set. And apparently there's going to be another episode. There's going to be a bonus episode. If you think that 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 was it, and it looked like that was it, but there's apparently going to be a bonus episode of Quiet on the Set. So, looking forward to that. Not really. But yes, in a way, because it's like you're looking forward to it, but you're not looking forward to hearing like the, uh, it's kind of gross, but, but it's good that it's getting out there. And one of the things that I was wondering is Kenan Thompson, obviously being part of all that. And Kenan Thompson is now, you know, obviously been on Saturday Night Live for almost like two decades, right? And I was kind of wondering like what his take on all this was. And I always, I, I totally forgot when I was watching the docuseries, I was like, oh yeah, Kenan and Kel. You know, that's where Good Burger and all that came from. And I was wondering, I was like, is he going to chime in on it? And he uh, and he did. He actually did. And he has a quote right here. It's definitely tough to watch because I have fond memories of what uh, of that place. And I have fond memories of my co-stars to hear that they've gone through terrible things like that. It's just it's really tough. And there's more to the quote. Basically, in the further quote he goes I, I he didn't really know about this stuff and dan schneider wasn't a showrunner on all on all that he basically took over a lot of that stuff when keenan thompson left so didn't really know about that but then again who knows he could be suppressing some things that's that's the thing when you hear about all this stuff and then you wonder like you know i've seen keenan thompson in like podcasts and interviews and you know i remember there was one podcast he kept his sunglasses on and he was kind of just like very like low and just like he he was low energy and it was kind of interesting and i was like and i just kind of wonder like you know being a child actor and then being in that environment and even being in the disney environment because he was part of the disney i mean he was in mighty ducks you know he was part of that so and we don't even know what the hell happened in the disney world and that's that that's what i'm wondering 
it's like we're getting the Nickelodeon stuff, but it's like, when is, when, are we going to get some more when it comes to the Disney? I mean, it, it's not like it was just at Nickelodeon that this shit was happening. But yeah, I'm glad he actually uh, talked about that. But yeah, if you haven't watched that series, I mean, it's a little grueling. It's a little, uh, little like, whoa, but you know. It's a tough watch. It could be a tough. It could be tough to listen to some of that stuff. You're like, ugh. There's many times where I went, ugh, God, just ugh, God. Pretty freaking terrible. Pretty freaking terrible. Ugh. Gun Superman, not my Superman. I forgot director's name. Ralph V. Funny. Not my, 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 not my Superman. Remember when we were saying that when people were giving shit to Snyder? Now people just say that. It's so funny. Isn't that funny? Yeah, Cavill's a perfect Highlander. I know. I think he's going to be a pretty perfect Highlander for sure. So, New episode on April 7th. So that's when that new episode comes out. See, I mean, that's how they do that because they want to make sure that you keep your subscription. That's how they do that. You know, but anyways, it's all good. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the main topic. All right, the Batgirl movie. Well, I mean, after the uh, Bad Boys, what is it, Ride or Die trailer came out, which I thought looked looked good. I think there's been, there's just, I think it, for me, when it came to watching the Bad Boys, the new Bad Boys trailer, I was like, I enjoyed it and, I, and I'm going to go see it. And I enjoyed the last one. But at the same time, I was just kind of like, eh, it's just, I don't know. I, the last one well, surprised me because of shit that happened in there. And I'm hoping that that's the case when it comes to this one, because there's things in there where you go, oh, man, some curveballs in that uh, in Bad Boys for Life, which they really they fucked up on that trailer but it's funny because they called it bad boys for life and you'd think like with the way that they title these sequels they would have saved that for the fourth one and just put the bad boys for life so they kind of cheese that up a little bit but that but then again i do understand why they called it bad boys for life because that was mentioned in the second one being bad boys for life and when you get the third one, you don't know if there's going to be a fourth one. You don't know if there's going to be a fourth one. So it's like, why not, why not just call it? We, we have no guarantees that there's going to be another Bad Boys. And then, of course, they probably when Bad Boys for Life, the third one, did well, then they're like, shit, we wasted the title. Now they're just calling it Ride or Die, which just call it Bad Boys 4. I don't know. Uh, ride or Die fast and furious much i don't know it's just <laughs> it's just funny uh anyways um so i mean the trailer looks decent like i said i like their dynamic i like their chemistry where's that trailer let me like pull it up right now a little bit there it is well lost it don't have to do the music but yeah so the trailer looks like a bad boys movie. Looks action packed. You got Martin Lawrence, of course, yelling and yeah. and of course you got Will Smith looking all. Sl- I mean, you know, Will Smith. He's trying to make his uh, comeback, and hopefully, people are gonna forget about the whole slap situation. It's been over two years, but uh, looks pretty. You know, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Like I said, I'll be there. You know, I like the Bad Boys franchise. Um, the first one's the best one. The second one's absolutely batshit crazy. Michael Bay was just doing some crazy stuff when it came to it. Third one surprised me, like I said, because I wasn't sure with like these new directors. And I always forget what their names are, and apologize for that. Let me uh, let me let me make, let, let, let me uh, make sure. And of course, I'm gonna butcher their names because I'm I suck like that. Where are you? All right. Yeah. Mr. R, R, what's it? What's his name? Mr. RB and, of course, Fala. RB and Fala. Just call them by their last names. Obviously, they were the ones that were going to be directing, that they directed the Batgirl film. So when it came to this coming out and a lot of people seeing, like, the action, the cinematography, and the way it looks, because there's a lot of cool shots in there. There's a lot of cool shots, a lot of colorful kind of shots. So there were some people that came out that were just kind of going like, 
well, wait a minute. You know, this kind of just reinvigorated the whole Batgirl, release Batgirl thing. And it's like, how could this movie be unreleasable? So I'm going to refer to this article from The Wrap that collected all these uh, tweets right here. And this is uh, Matthew Essery. Just watch the Bad Boys Ride or Die trailer, and I'm more convinced than ever that there's no way the director's Batgirl film could have been unreleasable. These guys got the sauce. A gentle reminder that the test screenings for Batgirl got a 60% approval rating with no score and no finished VFX shots. If 60% approved of your unfinished movie, especially without music, then you made a damn good movie. We got Richard Newby right here. I will never believe Batgirl was a bad movie. I don't care who says it was. Eric Goldman. Seems like it would be fun to see a Batgirl movie from these directors. Keith. This looks so good. Also, the director shot a Batgirl movie for DC Comics and Warner Brothers that was cut just before filming wrapped and listed as a tax write-off. Another reason why DC and WB can never get a solid universe going. Unreleasable. And who said that? James. No, it wasn't James Gunn. It was actually Peter Saffron. Remember, James Gunn, some people like to twist it where it's like, oh, yeah, James Gunn is all a part of the reason why Batgirl didn't get released. I don't even think James Gunn has even mentioned a single thing about Batgirl. But Peter Saffron, the other guy, which the guy I don't really trust at all, (laughs) I guess you could say, he's there and it's whatever. It's like, yeah, I, I trust James Gunn, but... Peter Saffron, I don't know about that guy. But the whole unreleasable thing, I don't think it's unreleasable. I don't think, I think that was just something that he put out there. And I, I definitely don't think it's unreleasable because I think they definitely did something pretty cool with it. Now, seeing the reaction to a lot of the, uh, you know, with uh, what, what her costume looked like at first, there was a mixed bag when it came to that, even though people who have, actually read Batgirl comic books, knew that, like, wow, okay, well, I mean, they're really going for this look right here. She made the costume. Cool. But I don't think it, to me, it's just like with everything that was changing and all, it's just, I, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's just Hamada really fucked things up when he was trying to rearrange things that were happening with the Snyderverse and then try to send the DCEU into this different direction. And then, of course, things weren't working out, so they had to delay things and things got rearranged because, remember, Batgirl was supposed to come out after The Flash. And that was going to explain the reason why Michael Keaton's Batman was in Batgirl. That was the whole reason why, and we were going to see that. So they got fucked when it came to that. I don't think the movie was unreleasable, especially when it was getting the 60% approval rating without VFX, without it being finished. It's just Zazzy Pants came in and everybody kind of just looked at the situation that was happening when it came to this DCEU and how other things, Aquaman wasn't working out, Flash wasn't working out. There was things that were not working out with the bigger budget movies. So they looked at the little budget movie at the $90 million movie and said, the business business sense we got to write this off cancel it write it off we can't put any more money into it and everything like that which in a looking at it at the business side it makes sense totally understand that but at the same time as, as an image side when it comes to a film studio it doesn't look good it doesn't look good when it comes to that and you think they, they could just throw it on on max on hbo max max whatever you want to call it they could have just throw, thrown it on there and let it just do its thing. If they didn't really have to, if they were going to have to do reshoots, I don't think that they, 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 if there was any reshoots that needed to be happen, that needed to happen, they could have just been like, no, just work with what you got. We're not going to spend any more money on this and we're going to throw it on the streaming service. Now, some people still have hope that maybe that could still happen. I don't think that's going to happen, but who knows? There is probably. There's a version of this movie on some kind of flash drive or some kind of hard drive somewhere. Who knows what might what might could happen when it comes to this. But I think what Saffron said, or I think it was him that said it's unreleasable. That's bullshit. I think that's bullshit. 
I think it's def- it was definitely releasable, but with everything that was happening, and they knew that they were going to have to pour so much more money into, especially Aquaman, but they were pouring in more money into the bigger ones, and they weren't going to cancel those, that they were just like, you know what? We're going to cancel this one. This one's just a $90 million movie, and it's not getting them as much buzz as maybe they would hope. I don't know. But, yeah, they all pretty much just kind of fucked it all up when it came to that. Like I said, the business side, I get it. But at the same time, it's like you still have an image to uphold. And this kind of tarnished that image a little bit. Same thing when it came to the whole Acme versus Wiley Coyote thing. I mean, that sucks, too. I mean, you're essentially taking two. You're taking, like, something in the, in the Batman world. And you have Michael Keaton back as well and you're gonna just cancel it it's not gonna look good especially and then of course you have the looney tunes i don't know you have two ips that i don't know it's just image wise it doesn't make sense business wise i guess it kind of makes sense but it's all just weird but yeah the whole unreleasable thing that's such a bold I, when i when i even read that i was like unreleasable that's just a weird word unreleasable yeah was he doing if you were to ask peter saffron that again like a couple of years later if you were to ask him again, where you was like, well, I meant unreleasable because it wasn't finished. Would he say some stupid like that? You know, just kind of play it off. I meant unreleasable because, you know, it just didn't look, you know. It's like, yeah, because it wasn't finished. The guys probably could have just did something where, you know, they finished, it, finished the movie and it turned out to be something pretty cool. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, anyways, that's just my two cents on it. The whole unreleasable thing is dumb. The whole unreleasable thing is dumb. How are we feeling about it? What's going on, Rhea? Good to see you. Guns DCU will be unwatchable. Eh, we got Ralph right here. So, you know, he's being one of those guys. Being one of those guys. If Saffron said it, I'm sure Gunn also agrees. Yeah, I don't mean... I think Gunn probably doesn't care. That's my thoughts. I mean, he's, he's, he's just like, all right, let's just go with this. Let's just go. He wants to, you know, just move forward with his, his whole universe. Black actors and Nick shows went through different trauma that wasn't S.A. I guess they were lucky the weirdos uh, was too racist to be attracted to him. Okay. <laughs> That's one take. I'm too racist to be, to touch you. <laughs> That's, that's, that's a weird, I, I don't know, Game Savior, that's a weird one to, it's all bad, <laughs> it's all bad, that's, that's a weird way to, it's a weird way to look at that situation, they were too racist to touch the black kids, I don't know about that one, I, I just, that's a weird one, I don't know, that's a weird, that's an interesting take, uh, it can never be released now because yeah, that would be yeah, it would it would it wouldn't get released now. DC should just drop the universe idea, just do trilogies. Zazzy pants have fault. Let's see, DCU to DCU. If uh, Bilal and Adil, uh, I'd never do business. Yeah, but I think they they probably still would. You're here for the James Gunn haters, Ben. <laughs> Actor Ethan Peck, who plays Spock, could he be James Gunn's perfect Batman? Oh, I know. I, I, oh, you talk about the new Spock in the show? Yeah. I hope Alan Richardson, Richardson isn't Gunn's Batman, but used in a more arti- Yeah, I don't think he's going to be his Batman either. So, Batgirl 2025. But anyways, so there's that. Rebel Moon. All right. So we got screenings, but only, of course, two spots. Q&A, all that stuff. Naturally, um, I mean, the updates that are happening when it comes to Rebel Moon is like screening with Q&A with Cass and, of course, Zack Snyder himself in L.A. and New York. And, of course, you can try to get tickets to all that. And then, of course, we've got some um, some other things that have also come out when it comes to Rebel Moon. Boop. There we go. So, Rebel Moon, part two, the Scar Giver. April 5th in New York City. April 11th in L.A. Fan screening. I have not requested my tickets, sadly. 
Thursday. <laughs> it's like Thursday. Last time he did a Q&A was on a fucking Saturday. Ah, ah. Thursday. That's a little difficult now because I'm, you know, I'm working day job stuff again. So that's not quite easy. And I've told you guys many times, it's a pain in the ass to get out to L.A. So I'm like, damn it. So I'm kind of debating. I'm like, should I do it? Should I not? I don't know. It takes over two hours. It's going to take me over two hours to drive out to L.A. in traffic. Seven o'clock showing. Q&A after. I'm not going to get home till like after 11 and then I'll work the next day. It's like, ugh. So that's where I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I might have to wait for this one. I don't know. Zach, if you're out there, can uh, you screen Rebel Moon? Well, if, 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 if Zach was actually going to have like a fan screening at his own personal theater, he'd be showing the director's cuts, which, hey, maybe that could happen. That'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, I might have to uh, sit this one out. Might not have to uh, make it out there. So I don't know. It sucks. It sucks. But yeah, I might have to uh, sit that one out, sadly. And then we got... New Funko Pops, new Funko Pops. First look at uh, Rebel Moon Pops right here. Coming out. So we got some Funko Pops as well. Milius, Gunner, Tarak, and uh, Jimmy right there. So this, this is, you know, just newer ones, I guess, with the antlers and all that. I think there was something else. Oh, yeah, there was this too. So when it comes to uh, New York City, so anybody in New York on April 3rd, Rebel Moon, a night of live music and photography to celebrate the release of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, EP release party with photography by Zack Snyder and special appearances by the cast, performances by Black Coffee, Jesse Reyes, and Taki Masta. Mosta. And then we got this image. Look at this image right there. Wow! That is freaking beautiful. Holy shit. Jenna Malone right there. That's Hamada. Harmada. That is a beautiful image right there. Jesus Christ. Zach, got an eye for that photography. So there you go. New York City, you got two things, the third and the fifth, L.A., the 11th. I'd like to say I would see you there, but I don't think that's going to happen. It's on a freaking Thursday. If it's on a Saturday or even a Friday, I'd probably go. I don't think I'm going to make it to that one. Anybody going to go? Anybody? What's going on, Axel? <clears throat> when you're running against Bill Murray for Batman, you're a joke. Now, Fourth apparently doesn't like Michael Keaton's Batman. What are you talking about? Fourth is pushing back against the majority of... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Condolences? Condolences for what? You're not a Zack Snyder fan, Ralph? <laughs> We got the hate. We got the hate going on. The hate going on in the chat right now. My God. Whew. Oh yeah, I remember. I was gonna mention in the tweets too. Jerry Bruckheimer. It's not like it's anything. I don't. I don't even really care. Just fucking make another movie. But he talked about Pirates of the Caribbean. Talk about two things. Pirates of the Caribbean is gonna be a full-on reboot. Whatever the hell they do. So no Johnny Depp coming back. I don't know who's going to be in it. They keep on mentioning people. Marco Robbie was attached to it at one point. And then he talked about, oh, yeah, we have a good story for Top Gun 3. Tom Cruise liked it, so it's in development. It's like we already kind of knew that. Anyways, sorry. Godzilla Kong and the New Empire. Well, the reviews are in. And what do the reviews say? Refreshes Rotten Tomatoes. Hey, guess what? The embargo has not lifted. That's a great sign. <laughs> I don't think we're expecting this movie to be anything spectacular. The last one was fine. This one looks fine. It's CGI porn. It's Kong and Godzilla. It's all great. But I think after minus one, a lot of us were just going, geez, we want more of this. But then again, that could turn into eventually this. That's what happens. It's like, yeah, you can go back to the basics. But then you start doing sequels. And then eventually you get to the point where you got Godzilla running with King Kong, who's wearing a fucking gauntlet. I mean, it's insane. But there's nothing wrong with some popcorn fun. 
I always say that. But let's look at some reactions when it comes to at least internet reactions because people were tweeting about it. Because there was some kind of like screenings that happened like in the past couple of nights. Let's see. You got to scroll though because there are not many. All right, here we go. So we got Mr. Uh, Mike Reyes right here. Ye howdy, what a ride. Fast, focused, fun. Fast, focused, fun. The balances story and spe spectacle into yet another righteous blockbuster. Adam Wingard and company continue to do marvelous things. The silly and serious sides of Godzilla have proper keepers of the flame. All right. Silly and serious. Watch out. Uh, Zach Pope right here. Pope, hey, Pope. Uh, Godzilla, Kong, the new empire is the war of the monsters I've been craving from the MonsterVerse, a brutal bash that explores hollow earth and centers the monsters as the main characters. I'm not joking. There are moments. It's all monsters and no cutaways to humans. Well, that's cool. I'll, hey, you know, the human story is, stories are always usually like the worst part of these movies. So they're really focusing on the monsters. Okay. Okay. Isaac. Uh-oh. I just watched Godzilla Kong, The New Empire, and it's, a, it's worse than anticipated. Frustrating plot that doubles down on franchise flaws. Dragging exposition scenes, lackluster VFX, and dull monster fights. A strange disappointment with a, some fun moments. Full review coming soon. He didn't like it that much. Alaz Dar, Kong, uh, Godzilla Kong, the new empire goes hard. Wingard's neon color palette and synth tones mesh with massive monster smashing, making this one of the best in the MonsterVerse. He liked it. Let's see, Chris right here, Godzilla Kong is way more fun than any previous monster film, MonsterVerse film that breaks the limits on what it can do with its action sequences. The story was quite simple with a forgettable villain and a human cast that has its pros and cons throughout the film. So I've seen a lot of positivity kind of stuff. Some people didn't like it. I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's the way it is. It's so much more fun. I mean, a lot of people are saying, hey, they're using the f -f 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 fun word. I'm going to go see it tomorrow. Look forward to my f first reaction review. I'm not expecting much. That's pretty much it. You know? What are we expecting from these movies? <laughs> you know? That's just what it is. Uh, what's it called again? <laughs> I forgot to pull up the box office projection. Like, I almost wanted to call it Frozen Empire. Jesus Christ. We have two movies coming out within a week of each other that have Empire in the name. That's funny. <sighs> Let's see. I saw those, some box office projections right here. Uh, all right. Let me go right here. Oh, yeah, it's Easter weekend, so I'm going to go see it on Easter weekend. Let's see. All right, so opening range. Opening range, it's according to Box Office Pro. Opening range is 51 to $65 million. Not too shabby for domestic, of course. And, uh, you know, we'll see uh, if that plays out right there. But, uh, yeah, it's looking like right here. This is the projections going on. $62 million domestic total. Nothing when it comes to worldwide. All right. I mean, I don't know how much the movie costs. Probably costs more than Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters did fairly decent. You know, it did a little bit better than Afterlife. But, you know, so there you go. Some projections right there. They're, they're thinking about $62 million, but it could be less. But, hey, it could be more. I don't know. But apparently they're already talking about even a follow-up. I think Adam Wingard's already talking about a follow-up. I'm like, where does it go? I mean, aliens are going to have to start coming back, right? I don't know. Who's seeing it this weekend? Anybody? Anybody out there seeing it this weekend? $135 million budget. Okay, so not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Pants and Batman was the first Batman responsible for death of an innocent person. Okay. I feel like complete shit. <laughs> I don't feel like complete shit. Have you guys watched uh, Immaculate? No. Oh. No, I haven't seen that yet. So is KK a lieutenant to uh, Godzilla now? Who's KK? Kathleen Kennedy? Is that what you're talking about? 
Huh? Yeah. All right. Let's get on to the last topic here, and we'll answer some questions. And then, of course, we'll do, uh, you know, the members only stream after this. If you want to do, uh, if you want to be a part of that, become a member. Join the Film Junkie family. You can pick my brain just a little bit. All right. Thunderbolts. Anybody excited for Thunderbolts? Anybody? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not really like looking forward to that much too, but at the same time, I'm like, well, there is one shining light when it comes to Thunderbolts. I almost said I said that so weird. I'm not I'm not drunk, I swear. But when it comes to, you know, Thunderbolts. Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh is gorgeous. And I always forget that she has an accent. I always forget that. I always forget that because when you watch her in movies, she, of course, doesn't have, you know, she doesn't use the accent. But she gave a little tour of Thunderbolts right here. And it's nothing too crazy. But yes. Hey, guys. How you doing? I know you're going to kind of drop off for a little bit. But that's partly because I uh, was whisked off to Atlanta. She's gorgeous. To go and shoot a movie that I'm not really allowed to talk much about. Um, but I can show you some things. Simply, as long as you don't tell anyone. I can show you this. That's nice. I can show you her. We mount that with it. This is Chessie. I can show you a sneak peek of some of the sets. We're in the studio right now. We're in the studio that we're shooting. On this movie that I can't tell you to drop. Quite on set. Who knows? But let's fast forward. <coughs> See, and then they're looking at some playback stuff. <laughs> Obviously, this is all planned, but you know. This is Jake, the director. What are we? What are we allowed to say we're doing? Oh, it's fine. The Marvel Studios official Twitter posted this. Look at that. That's the way that they're showing the. All right, so that's one thing that people notice right here, was the fact that there's a little asterisk on the Thunderbolts name. So they changed the look of the logo, I guess, yet again. I don't know, but there's a little asterisk like on it. So I don't know exactly what that means, but it just probably means that they're, hey, they're outsiders kind of thing. I don't know. That's that's my guess when it comes to that. And then, of course, there's a shot of her on the screen right there. Can I show you some of this? But she did. Like, I can't actually do that. Because you can use guys, and we can say we're having an amazing time, and I can't wait to see what we've made. Anyways, there you go. I just like looking at her. I, is that okay? <laughs> Slow news day, guys. Slow news day. I was like, what? What's going to be the fourth topic? And I'm like, all right, we're just, I'm just going to like sit there and just drool over Florence Pugh right now. That's what I'm going to do. She seems like a, you know, she seems like a fun person. That's all. Well, there you go. That's it. Nothing, nothing too crazy. But they, of course, just showed like the new, what the new logo looks like. And then the little asterisk that's right there. So I'm not sure exactly, you know, I'm sure they're going to like fold your, I, but again, just like how James Gunn's doing it, and hopefully, they, it's just like you got to utilize social media. You got to utilize social media to kind of promote this kind of stuff now, because people aren't just going to flock out to see it. You got to build up. You got to keep building up the the hype, I guess you could say. And Thunderbolts, I think a lot of people are just like, "Huh? What movie? What's that movie?" You know. So they got to keep building up the hype. Anyways, all right. All right, let's go to some Twitter questions. See what you guys are saying over here on Twitter. Burp, 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 burp. Okay, not too much. Yeah, I, I did have a typo in my thumbnail at first. Let's see. Yeah, we don't have to read the the one guy. One person said uh, Batgirl would have been mad. Would have been like Madam Web. 
that's a guy who, uh, you know, it's funny because there's a guy that uh, follows me on Instagram. And then and then I noticed I was like, this, that that uh, profile image looks familiar. He has in his bio that he brings positive energy, but he always shits on like everything. It's it's funny. People online are fun when they put stuff in their bio, like uh, Black Lives Matter, Stop Asian Hate or all that stuff. And they're, they're like the worst assholes in the world. <laughs> You know, they always want to push out like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a great person. I'm a great person. But then you disagree with that person. Oh, Jesus Christ. They like go after you. They they talk all kinds of shit. They're like some of the worst people. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Anyways, so RJ right here said Bad Boys 4 looks incredible. I think the trailer proved people are ready to forgive Will Smith. And move on from the Oscars controversy. People don't really care anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think people have already moved past that. I think after a year, people already moved past that. Darkness under the wind. Dave, question one: Should the at first uh, should they at first confirm Punisher continuation from Daredevil: Born Again take place in Phase Five, Phase Six, or soft reboot MCU after Secret Wars? I think they should soft reboot to get the X Men in there. Question two: How would you feel if this is what the Snyderverse looks like if the if it, if it all got continued in the comics? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, let's see. Maybe a third Suicide Squad could be in there somewhere. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Devon Wooter, Dave. I'm the only one who stinks. Ah, you don't stink. You don't stink. The title for uh, Bad Boys 4, it's literally ripping off Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. Ride or die, it's a little, it's a little like uh, Fast and Furious type. But they're both kind of similar movies. Do you think Vin Diesel got sued? Uh, got sued them, Sony, and what's your... Got sued? I don't think he got sued. What's your favorite moment from the trailer? For me, the end when Will Smith throw the gun. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty cool shot. Pretty cool shot. But yeah, they they missed out on that title. Mario, I wanted to see what Keaton would have done. I know. And there's some cool shots in there, too. It's like a cool shot in like a bell tower, which, you know, was like a throwback to Batman 89 when it came to... Uh, when it came, I mean, I don't think he was going to be in there like that much, but it was going to be like uh, Michael Key. There was going to be like a Bruce Wayne at a Christmas party kind of thing. And then there was going to be some Batman stuff. And then, of course, J.K. Simmons interacting with that Batman. That would have been cool to see. I don't know. There's a lot of cool things that would have been seen in Batgirl, but I'm just saying. In this world of digital, this digital world that we live in, it's like, hey, something's got to leak. Something's going to end up leaking, right? I mean, look what, I mean, it, it, it happened with the Snyder Cut, you know? Somebody call, call Zach up and be like, hey, how do we get this thing out, out there, you know? It's just pretty crazy. But anyways. Batman who's older than Gordon is just weird. Yeah, because, well. It's not that weird when the multiverse got all messed up. That's what was going to get explained. You know, the the end of the flash was gonna be like kind of an explanation of that or something. So Yeah, that's the thing, is like that whole explanation of why that was actually gonna be the case. Who knows? But they yeah, they should have done just a Batman Beyond movie. Alright guys, smash that like thumbs up if you'd be so kind. Members uh, only stream after this. If you want to be a part of it, become a member. You can pick my brain a little bit more and I'll see you members in a little bit. Look for it on your feed. And uh, make sure you guys uh, follow me on all these sock meds. Tune in tomorrow, of course, when it comes to our click-in tomorrow, as I like to say. we got DC Fanimated, as uh, Scott and I will be talking about a Batman episode. Going back to Gotham City, so we'll be talking some Batman tomorrow. And then, of course, the Vodka stream on Friday, which should be fun as well. All right, guys. Been fun, as per usual. Love ya. Talk to you later. Mm-hmm.